Waveguide Analysis Setup. Let's focus on exactly what we're talking about in this video. So here's this map of all these different types of waveguide analysis. But in this video, we're talking specifically about TEM analysis, where the longitudinal components are zero. So we already know this must be a transmission line and it has to have a homogeneous dielectric. So that's what we're talking about in this video. Let's remind ourselves of the existence conditions for TEM. And there really are two requirements. One, we need a transmission line. That is a waveguide with two or more conductors. And two, it has to have a homogeneous fill. So suppose we have this structure. This does not support a TEM mode. It has a homogeneous dielectric. However, it only has one conductor around the outside. So it doesn't meet the definition of a transmission line. What about a microstrip? Well, this is a transmission line. It has two conductors, but it does not have a homogeneous dielectric. If you can imagine for a moment electric field lines fringing from the conductor into the air and down into the dielectric, it's punching through two different dielectrics that is inhomogeneous. This does not support a TEM mode. It does support something very close to a TEM mode, but it does not support a true TEM mode. What about a strip line? Well, we have three conductors here. That's two or more, so it meets the definition of a transmission line, and it has a homogeneous fill surrounding the signal line. So this would support a TEM mode. It's a transmission line and has a homogeneous fill. Now for TEM waves, it turns out E not Z and H not Z are both zero. So what we can do is go back to our original set of six coupled partial differential equations after the solution was plugged back in and look anywhere there is a Z component of either the electric or the magnetic field. And we can just cross it off. And when we do that, our six equations simplify considerably. So here's the six equations from the previous slide. Now what we'll do, first thing, is we will solve equation 2D for HY. We will take that expression for H not Y, and we will plug that into equation 2B. So we're replacing this H not Y with this expression for E not X. Now we have a single equation just in terms of E not X. And we can simplify that down to this expression. And of course, we can cancel E not X from both sides. We have beta squared equals K squared. But long story short, this shows that for TEM modes, when we're analyzing TEM modes, our phase constant beta is equal to the wave number K. So they are the same thing for TEM analysis. We talked briefly about this cutoff wave number. I know we didn't mention that a whole lot yet, and then we'll talk about this more in, in following lectures, but that was k squared minus beta squared. Well, if these two terms are equal, this cutoff wave number is zero. And what we will conclude from this is the TEM modes have no cutoff frequency. So we will have a TEM mode all the way down to DC. Now let's derive the equation we will use to analyze a waveguide supporting a TEM mode, which is a transmission line. So if it supports a TEM mode, the Z component is gone. And in fact, our wave equation doesn't contain a Z component, so I'm reminding us here, it's still a vector equation because it can point in the X and Y directions, but I'm writing this X, Y here to remind us there is no Z component for TEM. Well, for the TEM mode, that cutoff wave number was zero. Well, if KC is zero, this second term in our wave equation drops out. And we're really just left with what is Laplace's equation. And this is something we saw from electrostatics. 
So this tells us that we can analyze the TEM mode as an electrostatic problem. It is not an electrostatic problem, but this is telling us we can analyze it as if it is. Given that we can analyze this as an electrostatics problem, let's derive a governing equation slightly differently. Remember what happened to Maxwell's equations when we made the electrostatic approximation. We set our frequency term to zero, or if we had the time domain equations, we set the time derivative to zero. Regardless, we ended up with these four equations for the electric fields. We also saw that the magnetic fields formed another set of equations. They decoupled. But we ended up with those four equations for the electric fields, for electrostatics. So the first thing we'll do is we will take our constitutive relation and plug it into equation 3B. And that's going to eliminate this D field. So we will have del dot epsilon times E, and that equals zero. The next thing we will do is we will replace the electric field in this equation with our definition of the electric potential. So E is the negative gradient of the electric potential V. So we'll take this minus del V, plug it in for the electric field here, and now we end up with a single equation just in terms of a scalar quantity, the electric potential. And we love solving scalar equations instead of vector equations. Now, when we have isotropic materials, our permittivity tensor reduces to just a scalar constant. So this is how we would analyze inhomogeneous transmission lines and difficult to do on paper. So let's make the assumption that it's a homogeneous dielectric and we actually get Laplace's equation. So very, very simple equation to solve. That's probably the number one most solved differential equation in the whole world, particularly for numerical analysis, because it's such a simple, great example. So that's an alternate way to get to the same equation. We're solving Laplace's equation to analyze the TEM mode. A few minutes ago, we had this conclusion that beta equals K. So that means the phase constant of the signal on the line is equal to the wave number, which is really talking about the speed of a wave in a medium. And I'm illustrating what that means on the right. Here we have a microstrip transmission line embedded in a medium with some relative permeability and some relative permittivity. And that moves along the line at some velocity. Down here, I'm showing a electric wave, electromagnetic wave in this medium with these same properties. There's no metals now, just this infinite dielectric medium. And the speed of this electromagnetic wave is the same as the signal on the line. So the velocity of a signal on a line is equal to the velocity of an electromagnetic wave in the infinite medium. So that actually means that one divided by the square root of distributed inductance times distributed capacitance is the same as one over the square root of the permeability times the permittivity. And that finishes the relation between a transmission line and a wave in an infinite medium. But remember, this only applies to transmission lines that support TEM waves. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for using EM Possible. I want to create more videos, and I want to continue to improve how electromagnetics and computation is taught online. To do that, it will really help me if you can like this video and subscribe to our channel. I also want you to know we have a lot more content that you may not be aware of. See everything we have to offer at eimpossible.net.